Welcome to Sharpening on the Color Channels. Um, this is an RGB image, as you can see here, 8-bit. And we're going to go ahead and do our sharpening here right away. But the first thing we want to do is call up the correct color channels. Come over here to your Layers panel, click on the Channels tab. And I want to do my sharpening only in the green and the red channels. I don't want to do any sharpening in the blue channel because if you have any noise in your image, it's more than likely to be living in the blue channel. And the last thing you want to do ever is sharpen noise. Click on the green and then do a shift click on the red. And as you can see, it has kind of a yellow color cast to it because the blend of red and green is yellow. So if you want to see your full color image while you're doing your sharpening, just click on the eyeball. That will make your full color image uh, viewable, but only the red and green channels are going to be active. From here, it's pretty straightforward and basically identical to what we have in our Unsharp Mask uh, tutorial. Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and there it is. Okay. By default, this is set to 100% and you want to be doing all your uh, sharpening while you are in a 100% enlargement. Keep an eye on the edges. That's really important. Uh, the amount will determine how strongly you want the sharpening to come in. That's a little nuts. The radius will determine how thick of an edge you want on those areas that are sharpened. And as, as you can see, that's a little bit nuts. And the threshold will determine how big of a difference do you want in brightness in neighboring pixels before sharpening will happen. If you bring it all the way up to 255, it means I want a huge difference in brightness before I'll sharpen. Effectively, no sharpening will happen in your image. The threshold, I always leave it down at zero and never change it. Uh, the radius recommended value there is, I don't know, somewhere around 1. It depends a lot on your image. Now, with the little slider, guys, it's real I want 1. It's really hard, actually, to hit 1 exactly. I got it. But if you're having trouble getting exactly where you want, once you release that slider, that 1.3, for example, is highlighted. Now you can use your up and down arrow keys. So I just do a down arrow, and I've got it. Okay. Again, keep an eye on edges. There's a nice edge for us right there. Come in there, click right on that, and we'll zoom to that immediately. Click for the before, release for the after. And there we go. Maybe I would even bring this down a little bit. Okay, that's really just about it. The only other thing you can do is experiment uh, in uh, fun ways with this. Uh, most of us just think that, well, when I do my sharpening, my amount goes up, my radius goes down. Well, play around with that. To, you know, flip that if you want to. Bring your radius down just for the heck of it and ramp your radius, uh, amount down and ramp your radius way up. Now, when you start coming up with your amount, you can start, start getting some very freaky effects here. And depending on how surreal you want the image, you can bring that baby up pretty well there and get some almost like these surreal HDR effects. So don't feel as though you're locked into the amount up and radius down. Play around. See what you like. Up arrow. Up to 1. 220. A little bit too radical there, actually. I'd bring this down to maybe, I don't know, 90 maybe? Down arrow. There we go. And again, don't forget to keep an eye on those edges. When you're sharpening in RGB, and uh, well, we're not doing B this time, but even if you're sharpening in the red and the green channel only, you've got to watch out for halos and color changes. So take a look at your edges. Do your before and after. Come in there. Do your before and after, before and after. Watch out for those halos. Watch out for color changes. And if you want to avoid halos and color changes, check out our sharpening video tutorial in the LAB color space. Now, the only other thing you do, if you've got it where you like it, is click OK. Very last thing, and, and something you know, half the time I'm always forgetting, is come back into your image, click on the RGB channel to make them all active. If you kind of forget this step, 
you're only going to have the red and green channel active, and then if you go on and do other uh, image adjustments, things are going to get screwed up pretty quickly and pretty badly. Uh, so yeah, make them all active again, and you're good to go. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.